I was a product that was on in the welfare system and I kind of went through some things. That was a struggle. I worked at the time and, and I, again, I've been with my company for, for many years, but at the same time, I actually worked a part-time job. So number one, I was thankful that I had my mom who was there and siblings who were there to be able to pick up. Again, I said I had three, four kids. Um, so two sons who was very active in activities, a daughter who was in activities. So there was always somebody around kind of like helping me to give them the things that they needed in regards to activities and that kind of thing. My, my goal for them was that I refuse for them to be a statistic. So that was my biggest thing in every, every decision that I made, my goal was for them not to be in the system. Once we actually separated, um, I was in a, in a bad space. I was pregnant at the time. And I can recall like mommy wanting to come over and talk and it was a bunch, everybody wanting to come over and really be a support system for me. But in the space that I was in, I didn't want that. And I think I said, I need y'all to just back off and leave me be and allow me number one to yeah, have Yeah, you this. stopped talking to us. Yes, I, I did. <laughs> I, very uh, angry and aggressive. I, I needed to get through my the birth of the child that I was carrying. We was at the hospital when you birthed. I know, but I'm talking about prior, before that. So I was going through that whole, from the time we separated, I think I was like four or five months. So that whole pregnancy was difficult. And I needed to actually go through that without being nobody being in my ear about what I should be doing, right? So at that point, I had just bought a house. I had just bought a brand new car. And now my marriage that, is actually going. You could pick up, but I just want you to know, you the kind of person that tell people what to do all the time. That is my truth. I just but, want you to know, but you don't okay. want nobody telling you what to do. Absolutely, Go ahead. that is Continue. true. Continue. <laughs> so after that, I I guess I was in a, in a depression, right? I had just given, not too long after I, I gave birth, but I had to go right back to work. And I remember going to work and, and really boo-hooing because now in the six weeks, I gotta go right back to work and I need to make sure, number one, that I pay for this house that I'm in and pay for this car that I have and still take care of my children. I was also seeking spirituality. Um, so even though we were raised Muslim, so that was a part of just us, me in general, right? So I had that part of it. Prayer was always there, but I wasn't actively doing anything. So after him and I separated, I started seeking. And I went to a few different masjids and, I, and it wasn't giving me what I needed at the time. So I decided to go to Anisi's church. So my Anisi has a church in Elizabeth. So I went there and at that point, and I knew the importance of having community. community. My daughter was older, so she was already 18, 19 years old. So she was, you know, doing what, you know, do, living life. But the, my son's was nine, I think, in like 12 or something, and, my, and I had a newborn. But I knew that I did not want them to fall victim to anything. Mm -hmm. And one of them had started to get in trouble. And I was determined for him not to be a statistic. So at that point, the, the urge to need, the, the urgency of him being in something became like like that was the most Top important priority. thing. So either and I specifically said to him, either I'm gonna ship you somewhere to some kind of military school, some type of program, but I was not gonna allow you to be in the system. So I, like I said, we go to church and I got something. That particular day, I got something. Mm. So hence, we actually just started going to church, and I think that that was important. Now, three or four years later, or maybe more than that, five, six years later. My seven or eight, or seven, eight nine, maybe. Seven. I don't know. <laughs> I have a college one daughter who is in her career doing what she do. She's a coordinator. A son that actually graduated um, with his finance degree. Another son who is at the uh, Air Force Academy, and a daughter who's twelve. Hazik, this is like his second time being here, and he's already been complaining just because he had to cut the grass. So, imagine all the stress I'm feeling, you know what I mean? <laughs>
to low enough so that we not fine. Now, did you, did you tell them a little bit about your boy, your young man? No, we're not. I think I've done a, a you know, I, I kind of commit myself. I always say, okay, sometimes you got to pat yourself on the back. So I do. I pat myself on the back <laughs> that they are all sane, they all focused, and they all are um, living their best life. You know, of course, again, I have a 12 year old, so we'll, you know, she's. She, I mean, she's a good girl as well, but that's my journey. And I think um, hopefully I can be a help to some women that was one that had, that was in, that's in my spot today. That, you know, that, that's my really goal is to kind of help somebody else get out of a space of poverty. Cause I think I was to a degree in poverty, not as bad as, you know, it could be, but I definitely was in a spot, but you can kind of achieve anything you set your mind to. You just gotta be determined to do it. Hard work got me now owning real estate. Hard work got me owning my own home. Yeah, I mean, I have a lawnmower. Well, why are you ain't bringing it with you? It's, well, the grass is wet. Well. had a community not only did he have family but other people that would come pick them up for basketball come pick them up for football there was a community of people that actually 
poured into their lives. So I can say that I'm thankful for everybody that contributed to where they are um, now. Thank you for joining us at Lundy Family Dinner. That's why I say it's about money. I mean, I got some, but I don't want to mess with that. I don't want to work. <laughs> Why don't you want to mess with it? But when do you know if you are working too I much? don't feel that. No, no, but when she does can't a person even, uh, know if they're working? Was always saying, oh, no, you don't get to sit down. Oh, no, you need to constantly be moving, so. So she called mommy and she like, he's sick, he's this, he's that. He can't go to work. My mom was like, well, no, he got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you don't need this, and I don't need that. And when will you end up alone <laughs> with all your money? Like, no. Tune in next week for another episode of Lundy Family Dinner.